So I've been getting a lot of questions from viewers and subscribers saying that either they weren't happy with their grades or they're asking how their teachers went about grading them and also quite importantly asking how exactly they can appeal their grade if they're not happy with it and how they can get that changed, if they can get that changed. Well, if you're one of those people, then listen up because I'm going to be filling you in on a new post that Ofcore put up on the 26th of August, 2020. Now, as usual, the link will be down in the description below, so feel free to check it out. Um, but of course, I've had a read through it so that you don't necessarily have to. Also, just a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button, not just to support, but also so that you never miss out on a video about GCSE, A-level or university education and beyond. OK, so without further ado, let's jump in. So to understand exactly how appeals and grade changes and stuff like that are working, of course, brought us back to how the Centre Assessment Grades or the CAGs as everyone now calls them, how we got to those. So they post a link to a document that they first released with guidance on how exactly um, centres were to assess those grades and how they were to come up with those final grades for their students and explained how using professional judgment and evidence they were able to get to those grades or how they expected schools to get to those grades. Now, just a quick reminder that there was a lot of emphasis put on um, teachers assigned the grades and even me myself, I did say teacher assigned grades or teacher assessed grades quite a lot um, just to make it a bit easier to understand. But please do acknowledge that they are centre assessment grades. Um, the centre is the core of it. All right. In fact, Ofco actually reiterate this in the post themselves that this is these are centre assessed grades. No lone teacher was supposed to decide the grades for everyone. OK. Now, quite interestingly, Ofqual have now clarified what many of you A-level students were asking me in comments. And that relates to your UCAS predicted grades, the ones that you use to get your places at universities initially or to get your interviews and things like that. Well, these CAGs that you've got, they're not really associated with the, those grades. They're a completely different set of grades done at a completely different time in the year. And this makes sense. Um, the grades which you use for UCAS are typically done quite early in the year and a lot can change between you know October or January until when we did eventually go into lockdown and just think in general um, in most years many students do not get into a university of choice many students fall short of their grades even me myself I may have gone to my university of choice but I didn't hit my UCAS predicted grades in some cases for one or two of the grades I didn't actually come that close I was about two grades off so it makes sense that they wouldn't be exactly the same. So if you're seeing a massive difference between your UCAS predict, um, predicted grades that you use when applying for university and your final CAG grades that you got um, in August, don't be too surprised or shocked because some time has passed and things are different. Ofqual also mentioned that in some cases, CAGs that were submitted were also different to mock results or other predicted grades that were done later on in the year. And this was for legitimate reasons, they said, just like the UCAS grades, the reasons were legitimate. It wasn't arbitrary. So if your grades different to those grades as well, so you might be saying, oh, but in my mock, I got this, but in my CAG, I got worse, so I got much better. Um, well, there's reasons for that because teachers and centers were supposed to be following the guidance that of course set out. So by using those, they arrived at the grade that you ended up with. Now, let's get down to appeals, the part that most of you are probably here for. So, as I mentioned before, it's still the case where students cannot appeal their grades because they're unhappy with them, because they didn't get what they wanted. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. That hasn't changed. But schools, however, they can still appeal. But they have to appeal on the grounds that the exam boards didn't apply procedures um, properly or data supplied is erroneous, there's a mistake in there. Now, of course, gave three examples of erroneous data being grounds for an appeal. So, number one, the head of the centre has evidence that the school or college made a mistake when submitting the centre assessment grades to the exam board. Two, the head of centre has evidence that the exam board introduced an error into the centre assessment grade data submitted to it or when it communicated a grade. Or three, the exam board used the wrong data when statistically standardising some students' results. OK, those are the three um, main points that schools can appeal based on when it comes to data. Also, um, bear in mind there's a key date here, that appeals that schools um, make, they must be made 
by the 17th of September. So the 17th of September is a deadline by which schools or colleges or any sort of centre can actually appeal. Now Ofcall then went on to say that when it comes to the first point, the one about um, schools making mistakes when submitting the CAGs themselves, the only way that the school can appeal using that route is if they made a clerical error. So I'm guessing that means that they put the information in wrong by accident. So they hit a two instead of a three or something like that. And also when there's a major error in terms of um, they measured a whole bunch of students by looking at specific types of evidence, but for one student, they accidentally missed it out. Okay, they can go back and say, oh, we missed it out for that student. Can you just correct that? Otherwise, of course said, and I quote, Given the care with which schools and colleges determined CAGs, we expect that it would be very unusual for them to identify such issues with CAGs, end quote. And that makes sense. Why would a school knowingly submit erroneous data when the guidance was all there? Now, quite significantly, there is some mention of the fact that some schools may have deflated their grades to make sure that they kept within Ofqual's guidance of trying to keep similar grade structures and distributions of past years. Uh, so it's sort of like a human version of the algorithm where teachers are trying to make sure that it lines up with, well, I say teachers, but centres are trying to make sure that it lines up with um, past years, okay? But, of course, not with the same rigour and discriminatory <laughs> thinking that the algorithm would have had built in. And... Um, a public letter was sent to them by ASCL, that's the Association of School and College Leaders, asking for them to basically allow schools to appeal those grades based on that fact that they may have lowered the grades to keep in, um, to keep in the pattern of that previous years. Now, Ofqual, of course, said no to this. After all, they basically said the centres followed the guidelines that Ofqual set and they were supposed to. So they did what they were supposed to do. There doesn't need to be a change. Now, I personally have no opinion on that because I see good arguments for both um, sides. So we'll keep watching and keep an eye on that and see if the no is final or see whether things do change in the coming days or weeks. Now, after this, Ofqual just reiterates the complaint system um, that they released some time ago, where simply put, students can complain first to the school or college if they think that there's bias, discrimination or malpractice. And then if their schools don't address the issue, then they can go on to appeal directly to the exam boards. Now, I talk a lot about this in my video that's entitled How Ofqual Made It Impossible to Appeal. And I will link that to, in the cards so you can watch it after you're done with this video. And um, on that video, you'll also find a document which goes along with this and explains exactly how the appeals and complaint systems work and how you can go about doing that. So make sure that you have a look at that before you jump into such a serious process because it isn't something to be taken lightly. Now Ofqual then round up this post with a list of important contact numbers and details and websites that people can go to if they want further help and assistance within this whole area of exams and appeals and everything like that. All right, so in short, the appeals and complaint system still remains pretty much the same as it was before, and as I've mentioned in my videos before, because Ofqual are basically saying that centres and staff can do their jobs and have done their jobs. So there's not really much that needs to be shifted around or done from here on out. And they're also saying something indirectly that I want you guys in all years to realise. And that is that your grades can change a whole lot in a few months. So be aware that those UCAS predicted grades that you get in, that get you into your university or get you onto your apprenticeship or anything like that, they won't mean a thing if you can't back it up, okay? Later on in the year, if you let yourself slip, if you stop putting in effort, you set yourself up for risk of failure. And even if the year did take place normally, some of you still would have failed, unfortunately, and probably would have if you ended up with those CAGs that your teachers gave you that you weren't happy with. There's a good chance that you were unfortunately showing evidence of, um, of failure or of not reaching those grades that you were hoping for. So I, I'm sorry if that sounds a bit harsh, but um, understand that consistent work is pretty much the key to, you know, to success in the long term. And it makes up for when things don't go according to plan, like they didn't in this year in 2020. So. That's all for today. Um, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. 
Um, right now, videos should be appearing on screen, which I know you'll find useful, so be sure to check those out as well. And I'll keep the information coming when it comes to news, information, advice, all about GCC's A-Levels, University and beyond. So that's all for now. Until next time.